Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. In this video, we're going to cover again from beginning to end how to proceed to print your photos. And the goal here, of course, is to end up with a finished product on photo paper that matches your screen as close as possible. So I'm gonna walk you through every single step that you have to master. We're gonna talk about what you should consider before you even think about getting into this. Again, it's a very expensive enterprise and you have to approach it a certain way. You have to really know what you're kind of getting into so you do not bite more than you can chew. That happens to a lot of raw beginners. I get questions daily. The guy or gal begins by saying, I am a complete newbie, but yet they bought a Pro 1000 or a P800 or a P900. Uh, those are not printers for brand new newbies, if you will, entering this field. You may have been a photographer all your life, but you may not have ever printed anything yourself, whether you worked in the days of the darkroom, the wet labs, or you kind of got into it. Right around the turn of the century is when we began to see consumer level printers which were actually not that great to begin with back then that's when I started I have been printing and shooting since I was eight years old I'm 72 right now I did it for 22 years in the army and then another 24 years for the government and uh, yeah I've been around the block a couple of times I began printing digitally once we began to sort of merge into that realm of digital imaging and at first i really didn't like it very much but i got used to it things improved the quality the output quality of these uh, printers improved greatly as time went by and so right now i couldn't even think of going back in the darkroom and working under those you know smelly chemical wet chemical conditions so let's talk about first of all this is going to be long so hang in there with me i'm going to break it down into sections and that is think hard before you get into this if you are just a beginner say with a dslr a high quality digital camera consider just playing around with your images on your computer at this point because you really have to get a good understanding of what a color space is, what an ICC profile is. Again, I didn't know what that was, but you know what I mean, the different types of papers, the th different types of printers and all of that. So stay away from that at this point until you feel comfortable enough to begin to jump into that facet of producing prints. At this point, just attempt to produce images that look correctly on your monitor we all know what human beings skin tones look like if you look at something on your monitor that you shot and it sort of looks orangey then you know something is wrong with your monitor display the color balance of that display may have been skewed either out of the box or by accident to display something that should be neutral toward the orange side or the greenish side or whatever. It depends on how skewed in which direction your color balance of your output on your display is skewed, whether it's accidentally done by you or that's the way it came out of the box. Quite often they attempt to calibrate these monitors before they box them up, but they sort of put them within a realm and there's a plus and minus error depending how large that is will depend on how critical your calibration needs to be or if you need to do it at all you may get lucky and get a perfectly calibrated monitor all right so the first and foremost thing that you need to consider 
once you make up your mind that you're going to then enter this craft, hobby, work, whatever you want to call it, of producing photos on photo paper, you need to calibrate that instrument that you use to view and examine and then edit those images that you produce. So the first thing you do is acquire an instrument that is dedicated to calibrating monitors. You could start off low end and just use a colorimeter and that will get your monitor calibrated. The quality will depend on how accurate your calibration is. So you can go with something like a Data Color Spider X Elite like this. And this this works quite well. Um, I don't think it's as accurate and let's just say consistent as one of the older x right Now x um sold part of their company to another company. I'm not sure what that company is, so forgive me for that. But anyway, they used to make an instrument like this. This is a spectrophotometer. It does two different functions, not only calibrate your monitor, but also produce custom profiles for the papers that you choose to use. But we will not get into that just yet. We're worried only about the monitor calibration, the accuracy of that monitor's display. Then you get into some then you get into something more expensive like this. This is a professional model calibrator. It is the i1 Pro 2 from X right now. Again, that might be sold now by a different company. But anyway, what that will do, the goal of all of this is to get your monitor to accurately display values that are being sent to it. Now, what are these values? Well, in the case of your private images, it could be anything. But we're going to use a standard image. And that standard image has been created specifically as a baseline with which you can test your monitor's display. In other words, how neutral that image can be displayed by this monitor. When you look at it after calibration, you will tell yourself, wow, that looks a little bit yellow. My calibration must be off slightly. And that all depends on what the white point that you choose in the software included with the calibrator. And it will sort of allow you to have a range either cooler or warmer. So normally we calibrate our monitors at Kelvin 6500 or D65. And for me, that produces a display condition where if I put up a middle gray value on Photoshop or Lightroom, it will display it neutrally. Now, another component of calibration is to make sure that colors, that's RGB and everything in between, is displayed neutrally from the darkest possible rendition of that color all the way to white. And that's called the linearization of color. And the same thing goes with your values. For instance, if you were to look at a ramp from black to white, in other words, little steps getting lighter and lighter and lighter from pure black to pure white, that it would be 000 and 255 three times, you should not see a change in tonality. You should just see a gradual increase in density all the way to white without a change in tonality. The whole ramp should look neutral. Once you achieve that, and another very important thing is that you put that range of tonalities right in the center, meaning that when you look at your blackest black, the 000, that little section looks like the pixels are off on your display. And then they become a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter, all the way to white. And you can actually see 254 times three and one, which is just a step above black. You need to be able to see that. That means that the dynamic range of that zero to 255 is able to be displayed by your monitor. You're not clipping anything on the right side, meaning the 255, say you're not clipping at 250 and losing 
five more steps or you're not clipping at five and losing the first five steps. You include everything. And if you do your calibration perfectly, that's what you will achieve. And once you do that, that means that the luminosity of your display, how bright whatever you're looking at is being displayed, you would still be able to detect from zero all the way to 255. And what happens very often is that people set their displays too bright because they work in a room that's brightly lit. I work in a dark room. Look behind me. That's how dark my environment is. When I set my display to be able to show me the blackest black, zero, 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 all the way to the whitest white, 255 times three, that means my luminosity and also my contrast range is set perfectly. So that is the goal, to set color balance perfectly so that it is neutral, to set your dynamic range perfectly so that it's from zero to 255 and you can actually see it with your eyes and also that includes of course contrast if it's too contrasty you're going to clip on the dark side and also on the bright side so that is the first thing calibration of your monitor and why do we care about that why should we even you know lose sleep over that because what is your goal in this little adventure you want to print your images and what do you do? Do you connect your camera directly to the computer and then browse through your images and immediately print them? Of course you don't. You use an editing application to view and see whether you can actually improve, crop, change the color, if you will. Yeah, you can do all of that on your editing application. But here's the catch. I want to be able to view my raw images out of my camera accurately. So then I have a good baseline, which I can then use to alter that image. If the image is not being displayed accurately, then the changes that I may make, whether I think it's looking a little bit yellow and I subtract yellow to make it look neutral, I'm actually making it look blue. You see what I mean? Because it shouldn't have been displayed with a yellow cast. That means my monitor is not correctly calibrated. It is not neutral. You need to make it neutral. That way you have a thermometer that is calibrated so you're not fooled into thinking you have a fever or you do not have a fever. You see what I mean? You better have total confidence on that thermometer so that when you see 98.6, it is actually 98.6 and not really 101 or you're hypothermic, you know. So, yes, you have to rely on that instrument to be accurate. And that's why we spend so much time and effort calibrating our monitors because that is the starting point. That's where you start off. Everything else moves from that, okay? Your display has to be accurate. I cannot say that enough because then your editing means nothing, folks. It means absolutely nothing. All right, let's move on to printers. So the job of a printer, of course, especially an inkjet printer, which will have maximum probably 12 ink cartridges. Some of them use a liquid that is clear to reduce the differences in gloss from various colors because they do have different gloss indexes so again you could have as little as four cmyk six eight nine ten eleven and the higher end printers will have 12 colors to choose from but really it would be like if you had a crayon box with only 12 crayons can you imagine having to then attempt to reproduce over 16 and a half million colors. That's what the printer's print engine is able to do. So in order for that to occur, the factory that creates this printer will also create what is called a print engine. And that is just a program, let's just call it, built into your printer's chip 
that can translate information that it receives from the computer and how to create a mixture, a mosaic, if you will, microscopic, of dots of different color inks, which will then appear to you when you look at it visually as over 16 and a half million colors. That is not an easy thing to do. And of course, that level of accuracy requires one heck of an engineering job by these designers. So let's pick a model of printer, say a Canon Pro 1000 or an Epson P900 for that matter. It doesn't really matter which printer it is. It will have a limited number of colors from which it is expected to produce over 16 and a half million colors. Shades, hues, you name it, from black all the way to white in every color known to mankind. So how do you do that? How do you maintain that level of accuracy so that everyone that buys a P900 can enjoy approximately the same output? Oh, did I scare you when I said approximately? Yeah, there's going to be a margin of error, plus or minus, because these printers, every, every printer is basically assembly line produced and they're not going to pull every printer out of the line and test it with ink. No way. So they will randomly check a printer every so many batches and then will print some special uh, set of color patches which are of a known value and then the results will be read by a spectrophotometer and then the errors in reproduction will be able to be recognized and adjusted for in the reprogramming of this print engine. So before you get too far ahead, say you just went ahead and took that big step of buying a printer, you need to then verify its output. And the way you do that is simply using a specially produced image. And that is an image that nobody is supposed to ever edit you use the raw image that you download, and I make these available for you on my Facebook group, Photo Printing Techie. And basically, what you do is you go to the Files tab, and you have a whole array of files that you can download, including these standard images, or so-called evaluation images, because they are used to evaluate your printer's output. Now, a Pro 1000, for instance, from the factory, it will be calibrated to a certain level of accuracy. But unlike all the other printers, the Pro 1000 allows you to internally calibrate it to the point where it's technically what the factory intended it to be. So that's a huge plus because that will take care of any little errors, plus or minus, that of course will always pop up in a mass produced product. So you perform the internal calibration once you set up your printer initially, and that is done through your printer's screen, not the driver on your computer. And you can just simply use a Canon paper such as ProLuster to do the internal calibration. What it will do is it will print some patches that are known to be certain values. It will allow them to dry and they will then be retracted back. And then when it begins to advance again, a built-in then Cytometer will take readings off of these patches and then correct any slight errors in reproduction that may have occurred. And that way that information is that recomputed into a correction curve, if you want to call it that, which is then saved in your printer's internal software or firmware. And so that then brings that Pro 1000 to a factory accurate condition for output. So if someone on the other side of the country also has a Pro 1000 and they perform that same operation with the same paper, then my printer and their printer will output identically. And that's an important thing because if I want to share profiles, we won't get into profiles yet, but if I want to share profiles, it's very important that our outputs are as close to identical as possible. Okay, so now you have your printer and you have to verify. Let's see, let's see what this baby can do, right? So never, ever, ever, ever use one of your images. 
Your images are not a control image. You have no idea what the colors are. You have no idea whether your camera sensor actually reproduced the colors that it saw through its lens. The colors that it saw through the lens correctly. You don't know that. So you want to use a control image. You download it from my site, open it in whatever editor you are printing with. And remember, guys and gals, I work with Windows only. So I do not work with a operating system that will attempt to basically automate certain functions. They may not be um, basically uh, aimed at people who print photos. They are basically aimed for people who want to do general printing. Photo printing is an art by itself. It's a separate little realm, a separate little genre. So you need to have a fully manual operating system and driver so that you can set settings a specific way. Those of you who use Mac will argue with me, of course. Those of you who know how to print through a Mac get absolutely perfect, excellent results. But many people that use that system also have some problems, as well as Windows. They all have that. But Windows is a totally manual way of printing photos. And so any fault in my output, that's my problem. I did not set something properly. Again, I don't want to, you know, alienate anyone here, but that's what I have experienced. All right, so let's go ahead and verify our printer. So we're going to open up our image. I'm going to use, say, Photoshop this time. We'll open up Photoshop. We'll come back and show you what to do. But first, before we do that, let me show you what the images look like. As you can see, this is my folder with all the images that I make available for everyone, free for download. Some of these images are no longer uh, able to be downloaded because the links are broken. I don't know why, but I managed to get them prior to that problem, and I have them in my files tab in my Facebook group, Photo Printing Techie. There is a link on my video descriptions to join. So we're going to go ahead and open this one here, but we're going to go ahead and first open Photoshop. Normally, I either print through Lightroom or print through QImage. But we're going to show you guys how to do this through Photoshop first. So we are going to open this image here, Printer Valuation Image V002 Pro Photo. So we'll open that up, and here we have it. Okay, so we're not going to do anything to this. We're just going to go ahead and print it. So we'll go to File, Print. And I'm going to show you how to do this basically using, say, a Pro 1000. We'll go and grab our Pro 1000. Since it is in horizontal mode, we'll pick landscape. Of course, you're going to feed your paper normally in portrait mode. We're going to go here to our printer settings. Printer manages color is what we're going to use. And many of you may be asking yourself, wait a minute. Aren't you supposed to print this using color management? Actually, you can print on a Canon printer and an Epson printer using Canon and Epson papers or media. So make sure you have this printer manages colors, print settings. Make sure that you have photo printing activated. The paper that you're going to use, in this case, letter size. This image is letter size. So choose letter size paper. And then we're going to use Pro Luster. And here's the key. So you're going to pick this little box right here click on it go to matching and make sure that it's on icm either icm or color matching why because it's going to take that pro luster paper that you loaded on your printer and link it to the pro luster icc profile living in your hard drive okay so make sure when you print these standard images, you always use relative colorimetric as your rendering intent. We'll get into that a bit later, what that means and how it applies to certain images. But this is your control. You want to test to see how accurate your printer can produce this image. And hit OK. And now you hit print. So that's all you do. So let's go back through this again. Printer manages colors. Print settings. Canon paper. It could be any of those papers as long as it's Canon. Click on this box here. Again, this only applies to Windows. 
matching, make sure it's on ICM. That will automatically link that paper from Canon to the matching ICC profile living in your hard drive. That was installed when you installed the driver for your printer. That is it, and make sure you choose relative colorimetric. Hit OK, and print. That's basically it. Let's try this in Lightroom now. Basically, it's going to be a little bit different, but everything pretty much is the same. And load the same one we used in the past, and then we simply go to print. And again, you're going to choose the correct printer, which in this case is the Pro 1000. Like so. Properties. Actually, let's change this to landscape. Properties. And the same thing. We're going to make sure that we have Pro Luster or whatever other paper. We're going to click on the little box. Matching. ICM. Relative. And done. Now that printer now is set to print basically using the same settings that we had in the past. Now, one thing that you have to do with Lightroom is that you have to tell it, just like with Photoshop, to let the driver control color. And that is done right here. Either you let the driver control color or you load an ICC profile. Then you have to go back and then turn the driver control to none. We'll deal with that later, but we're just basically showing you guys how to verify your printer's output. Now, let's go ahead and close this and we'll print this from QImage. Open up QImage. Again, it's very monotonous. It's basically the same thing. You're making sure that the driver is using a photo paper for which it is intended for. Basically, a Canon paper for Canon and an Epson paper for Epson. Simple as that. And then all we have to do is go to Printers, Pro 1000 series. We're going to go to Luster. Again, it doesn't matter what paper you use, as long as that's the paper you're actually loading. When you do that, however, it's going to go back to what the settings were used for the last time you printed on Luster. So we want to print on letter size. And so that's what we will then choose. Again, go to Properties. And the same old, same old. Click on that. Matching. Go to ICM. Relative Colorimetric. That is it. That's all you have to do. Beauty about QImage is that you will get an automatic setting of your driver's color management. Okay, and that's the only time I don't mind getting something automatically done for me. What it will do is this. When you tell QImage that you want the printer to control color, it'll make sure that your printer's setting, that little color intensity slash manual adjustment, is set to ICM. And when you tell QImage that you want it to control color through, say, a custom profile, you can do that as well. You would not have to go into your driver to turn that setting to none. It will just do that automatically for you. So you cannot double profile. Now on Macintosh computers, you technically cannot double profile either but it uses a different type of color management than Windows. So that's something that you would have to learn and you know master on your own so you get consistent results. Often what happens after major updates of the operating system is that things kind of change and you have to go back and reset them. So be aware of that. Try not to immediately update something that is working unless the update will include so many other amazing features that you just cannot wait. Uh, if you are using your computer strictly for photo printing, like I am using mine, then I tend to sort of, you know, not be too excited about a promised uh, update uh, that includes this and that. I ask myself, how will it improve my photo printing? Eh, then I don't update. Simple as that. I just remain where I'm at. If it ain't broke, don't fix it type of uh, you know philosophy here. So now we have that printed, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at it. All right, I went ahead and printed a larger version of 
the standard image so you kind of get a better idea of what you will achieve when you do this again you want to be able to create a neutral result this is not too light this is not too dark and if you look at the ramp that's located right here black all the way to white you may notice that it is not changing in tonality or hue yeah the reflections are maddening but anyway trust me this looks perfectly normal the strawberries look correct nice and red this area here is a electron scanning micrograph it looks neutral the children's faces the skin tones look correct the shadow size on those skin tones do not have a bluish tint and every other portion of this composite of images is something recognizable that you can you know it's it's just not being reproduced incorrectly you know what you just know when it is not being reproduced correctly is something very very common to our eyes something that we are used to seeing so this is the result now you would take this and then view your projected image and then view your and then view the same exact image as being displayed in your monitor and you want to make sure that the colors have not been skewed one way or another or the overall color balance of it is not some other direction except for central neutral condition so that is the goal if you achieve that right off the bat then you you probably hit a home run okay more than likely you will have to make some adjustments in your color temperature in your software for your monitor calibrator until you are able to see because this is going to come out neutral if you use the settings and the way that i display and the way that i describe to print this you will get a neutral result and that has to be made to match what your computer display is attempting to show you and again don't ever edit that image it's supposed to stay on touch you just open it and print it it is the only control that we have available for us so again this is your goal if you get a perfectly neutral not too bright not too dark and you determine that by looking at your ramp if you cannot see pretty much the whole ramp backlight it if you have to if you cannot see the whole ramp then something is getting clipped and that may be due to a malfunctioning printer it could be that now in order for you to be confident that your printer is ready to perform that process of producing a control print you need to do the nozzle check and this is what a nozzle check looks like for the pro 1000 you look at every one of those sections for all the 12 channels and make sure they include every single cross every single little cross is included if you do not have every single cross included then go ahead and perform a cleaning cycle now here's a hint for you guys if only one color is having problems you do not have to do a complete 12 channel cleaning cycle you can choose the zone or the group that contains that problem channel with a few crosses missing. So for instance, if you notice, we have group one, two, and three. Check out to see which color is having a problem. And then on your driver settings, on the maintenance tab, under cleaning cycle, make sure you only choose that particular group. And there are three levels of cleanings. So start with the mildest one so you don't waste ink unnecessarily. Choose that zone. Redo your nozzle check. It should be okay. Usually that happens during the initial setup of your printer. So we are ready now to print because now our control image matches what we see on our monitor. Whether you're using Q image, whether you're using Lightroom, or whether you're using Photoshop. Once you achieve that level of so-called perfection then and only then can you trust that when you edit your images they're going to be 
reproduce accurately. The printer will do this. It will print what you send it. Here's a scenario for you. Your display is too bright. I set mine at CD80M2. Most people use 120. And that's simply too bright, especially if you decide to work on a darker environment. Your monitor will just be too bright. And what will that make you do? It will instinctively force you to reduce the luminance of your images. And of course, what does that mean? You're actually darkening them. And the printer has no choice to produce what you feed it. Simple as that. If the control on altered image prints correctly, but it looks too bright compared to the actual print, then your monitor is too bright. It may be displayed accurate as far as color goes, but it might just be one or two stops just too bright. Great if you're working in a super brightly lit room, but not so great if you're working in the proper working environment for editing, which is a darkened room. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. The next video will then cover a couple of more areas of color printing. We'll gradually get into the more advanced level of using ICC profiles, the theory behind producing profiles for different printer ink and paper combinations, not necessarily the ones made for the particular brand of printer. So let's go ahead and do a very quick recap. Be careful what you buy. Be careful when you buy it. Do your research prior to buying. Learn what your limitations are and learn what your goals are as far as print sizes. What exactly do you want to produce with your printer? Okay, and that will then lead you toward a particular family brand or model of printer. And realize that once you get those printers, you're married to that printer. You're going to have to use it. We'll get into that aspect on the next video as to what happens if you don't give your printer enough or frequently enough use. Now, monitors, initially, that's the first thing you do before you even drop a dollar for a printer. Invest in a monitor calibrator so you can calibrate your monitor. Otherwise, it's all going to be a moot or useless exercise in futility, basically. Because if you cannot accurately display your images, then you cannot accurately edit them. And again, once you set up your printer, you need to verify your printer's output, how printing a standard image. Again, you can get those for free on my Facebook group, Photo Printing Techie. Files tab. Open it. File print. Set the printer. If you're using a Canon printer, you're using Windows. Choose a Canon paper. Make sure you actually load that same matching Canon paper on the printer. Click on the box that says color slash intensity manual adjustment. And then set your function to ICM on the matching tab. That will set up that driver to actually link that paper choice that you are printing on to the correct ICC profile, which is automatically installed when you install the printer driver. That is it, you are now printing with a full color managed workflow. That resulting print should be near perfect. You compare it to your monitor. And if you need to do a slight adjustment, now is the time to do it. Because if your output out of that printer is as good as I expect it to be, then any errors, any discrepancies between your display and the actual print on paper have to be addressed. And usually that means this has to be readjusted. And also, if you're fortunate enough to own a Pro 1000 or any of the higher units, you have a way to internally calibrate your printer so that it is outputting at the factory setting. All right, and that's it. After that, we're going to get into uh, other aspects of printing. Again, this is going to be extremely full of information. Of course, everybody accuses me of talking too much. But I just want to make sure that you guys have as much information as I can possibly provide you. Because every day I get inundated with questions. And obviously, the people asking these questions are raw beginners. And they really don't know what to do at this point. 
and they sort of jumped a little bit too far ahead. Again, so thank you so much, and don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, everybody.